Peace, peace, peace. This is your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? Peace, champions. What is up? What is going on? Say what's up to the kid. It's Brooklyn's finest. Your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo, reporting for duty. <laughs> my 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 son would laugh. He would say, "You said duty." But anyway, what's up, everybody? Hey, today we have a great show for you guys. I am grateful that you guys are tuning in. Uh, definitely shout out where you're tuning in from. I'd love to know. Share it with the family, por favor. Share it with the family, por favor. S'il vous plaît. Please. Uh, we are going to talk about marketing, branding, and sales. Oh, my, on some Wizard of Oz shit. Like lion, tigers, and bears, you got marketing, branding, and sales. Oh, my. How many of you guys remember OxyClean? Billy Mays and OxyClean. How many of you guys remember that? What up, Mike Brooks? Salute, baby. Uh, Kerman Wingfield, salute. Michelle, Monique Thomas, salute to you, Queen. <clears throat> How many of you guys remember OxyClean, which is still on the? Um, they still have commercials for OxyClean. Now they got that really, really hyper dude with the lazy eye and shit. Uh, he always had the little microphone on the side of his head. He's always uh, he, like that dude is super hyper. He he might do some coke. He might do a little bit of cocaine, but oh, I don't know. That dude is mad hype. He makes me want to buy, like, bucket loads of OxyClean. But how many of you guys remember uh, this guy right here I have on the screen? Billy Mays. Rest in peace, Billy Mays. He was the first OxyClean guy. So I received an inbox from, uh, you know, a Facebook loyal champion. He asked me, Dude, you have marketing, you have branding, and sales. I don't know the difference. Can you explain it to me? Can you explain it to me? So instead of just explaining it to him, I figured I'd just make a video and explain it to all you guys in case you didn't know the difference of the two. And the best example I can use is this OxyClean uh, product, product and service. Shout out to you, Christian. Okay, so as far as marketing is concerned, let's take this OxyClean thing for for instance, right? OxyClean would be part of the marketing, right? Every time you see OxyClean, it's always going to have those same colors, right? You're going to have the white with a little bit of hint of blue in there. They will never deviate from those colors when they're spelling out OxyClean. The reason why they want people to be able to identify OxyClean from the real and the fake. They'll never deviate from those colors and that type of font because they do not want to confuse the customer in case they have some hijackers that want to create some you know, rogue OxyClean and then confuse the customer. That's why it's very, very important. And I kind of explained this to you guys on a different, um, a different podcast. Whatever your profile image is, that is the same profile image you want to have across all of your social media sites. You don't want to have three, four, five different images of, um, you have one image on IG, then you have another image on YouTube, then you have another image, a profile image on Facebook, Snapchat. You want to keep it consistent. You want to keep it congruent because when a person or a company is looking for you, all they have to do would be like, oh, that's the same image I saw on Facebook. That's the same person. Let me reach out to them. So you'll notice that anytime you see OxyClean, it'll always have that blue and they'll always have that white. Another tip, <clears throat> you want to find out what your 
signature colors are going to be. And the way you have a signature color, you need what is called a hex code. I repeat, a hex code. That's capital H as in Harry, E as in Edward, X as in DMX, hex code. What that does is anytime you're using uh, some type of images or graphics or anything like that for your marketing, your colors can stay consistent throughout all of your marketing materials. For instance, um, for my mobile notary uh, business, I have a hex code 117ACA. That is the same color that Chase Bank uses to for their logo and every all of their publishing materials because I wanted to use something that was that had to do with financial. So because a lot of people can identify with uh, Chase being with money, the notary, I wanted to use the same type of colors, which I could have used. Um, I could have used Bank of America, which is a red. And then all you really have to do is go on Google, type in whatever your favorite company is. Whatever color you want to uh, mimic, type in, uh, let's see, Walmart hex code or Harvard University hex code, University of Chicago hex code. And these, there will be about five numbers, five to seven numbers with a hashtag in the front. That is going to help you guys a lot because it, it's going to keep a consistency with your marketing materials. So you're looking at the marketing part. You're also looking at the background, right? When you look at the background of this OxyClean, you see that he has tubs of OxyClean on a shelf. Now, as we, as he could, they continue to do more and more OxyClean commercials, they get really good and they start to do, let's see, in a kitchen, in a kitchen setting, which this picture is kind of blurry, but it looks even better with the kitchen setting. That has to do with the staging of the OxyClean. So if you guys notice, the color is still the same. It still has the white and it has that blue. And I bet you, if you were to Google OxyClean hex code, it will come. Matter of fact, let's do that now. Let's do that now. So I, I want you guys to really understand this. <clears throat> Shout out to all you guys that's tuning in, by the way. Share this with your fellow entrepreneurs, if you please. So we'll go to all and then OxyClean hex code. So as you see right here, see? Right in here, you'll notice the hex code for OxyClean. See what I told you? It has a certain blue which is, this is the hex code for OxyClean. That means you can input this number into any color scheme when, it, when you're trying to pull up a color chart and it's saying more colors, you can put this color code right in and you'll now have the OxyClean blue exactly to the number. That way you don't have to think about, oh man, what was that color we used? It looks closer to this, it looks closer to that. Fuck all that. You get the code. Get the hex code. And this is the white that they use, which is a normal white. And then they started using the yellow trim that goes around it. You follow me? Am I making sense, ladies and gentlemen? So, uh, yeah, let's go back to, let's go back to the OxyClean. So, as you see with the marketing part of it, right? They started doing more commercials in kitchen settings because they figured, hey, that's where a lot of our products are being used, either in the kitchen or in the laundry room. So let's see here. 
Yeah, this is another, uh, the other new guy. But anyway, <clears throat> so that is part of the marketing and the branding of it, okay? So, you see they have, I mean, ask yourself, why would they have oranges there? Because they want to give you, they want, the part of the marketing is like, this thing doesn't stink. It doesn't smell like ammonia. It has a sweet smelling scent that you can, you know, use on your clothes or anything like that. Now, one of the things that they wanted to do was show you how powerful the OxyClean was. So they had a big tub of water. Now, this is all marketing now. This is all marketing. The, but this is where the marketing turns into sales. The reason why they contracted Billy Mays is because they understand the three fundamental principles. You have to have marketing, you have to have sales, and then you have to have branding, right? So now they have to do a demonstration. The OxyClean cannot demonstrate by itself. So they employ a person like Billy Mays they get a tub of dark water. They take a scoop of this OxyClean, pour it in there, right? And then, voila, it turns into white water. And look at him. You need this product in your home. He drives home that sale. That is the call to action. Call OxyClean, order your two buckets now. This is why you need sales. This is why you have to understand sales because your marketing is going to attract a bunch of clients to you. But if you don't know what to do, how to close the sale, how to upsell them, downsell them, cross sell them, you're going to lose so much sale. You're going to have your phone ringing off the hook, but you're going to lose a lot of sales because you do not have a sales process. And then the branding, of course, will be the color, the type of font that they use, even the signature bucket that they use, that they were rolling out. As, as they progressed and they started becoming more and more popular and making more money, they started, you know, designing their own bottles. They had an OxyClean spray. Um, but originally, it was just a big old bucket tub. You know, it, was, it looked like this. That, that's basically all it was. It was just a tub. So then they went into detergent. Then they went into sprays. And then now they, they're even collaborating, which this is a, that's a totally different part of marketing. They're, they're doing strategic partnerships with companies like Lysol and um, other companies like that. So let me know if you guys have any questions, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you guys have any questions on it. Again, uh, please share it with your fellow entrepreneur if you find value in this video. If you don't find value in this video, don't worry about it. Shout out to uh, Judy, Keisha, DK, Deontay, Chaz, Rufus. Shout out to all you guys. Salute, salute. Uh, Bridget, Joe Martin. Um, yeah, shout out to all you guys. So I hope that helps you guys understand. So the marketing part is you attracting as many, basically you're spanning wide. You're letting the world know that, hey, this is the product we have. Come check us out. Now, will everybody use your product? No, but you have a disqualification process. You have a disqualification process. Then you have your sales. Your sales could be a salesman like a Billy Mays. It could be um, a sales process like a call script. You know who's really good with call scripts is Home Shopping Network, QVC. When you call, they have a process on how to sell you more of these products. At, if you guys do not have a call script in your business for your personnel or anybody to uh, use, you are losing a shitload of money. You are losing a shitload of money if you do not have a call script because at that point you're winging it. You're winging it. So what happens when a, 
when a client calls your business, like one of my businesses, uh, we have a marketing agency. I have a call script for them. My other business is the public notary business. I have a call script for them. You have to have a call script because every, what customers will tend to do is try to take over the conversation and they'll try to stumble you up. But as long as you have a script, you can always go back to the script and then drive in that sale. And then as time goes on, you just continue to brand your company. You continue to brand your company. And that the branding part is the color, it's the font, and do not, I repeat, do not deviate. You may do little tweaks here and there, but at the end of the day, when the Mr. Clean that they had in 1968 looks like the same goddamn Mr. Clean that they have in 2018. Those two dudes look the same. They even got the same earring in the left ear. Let's look it up. Mr. Clean logo. There is no change. There is no change. You guys can see it right here. It's this, he still has the blonde eyebrows. He still has the clean white t-shirt. And then he has the earring in the left ear. It's the same because they do not want to confuse the customers and clients. What if they had this Mr. Clean right here and then you went on Instagram and you saw You saw this person, and they said this was Mr. Clean also. You're like, no, nah, that's not Mr. Clean. That's Aunt Jemima. That's Aunt Jemima. Now, of course, I'm glad they got rid of this mammy-ass looking Aunt Jemima, and they gave my Aunt Jemima looking good, girl. She looking good. Now, come on, y'all. Aunt Jemima looking good right there. She looking damn good, right? Move out the way, Butterworth. So you have to keep a consistent look. You have to keep a consistent color. You have to co keep a consistent image with your brand. That's how you build brand loyalty. The way Gucci looked 20 years ago is the same font and same logos that they're using today. The same look, the same double R that they use for Rolls Royce and fucking 1802 is the same goddamn logo and double R that they're using today in 2018. That is how you build a brand is consistency. Consistency. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Uh, what is it? Uh, Wingfield. Yes. Coca-Cola. Same exact look. They're not trying to, you. That's the last thing you want to do is lose your customers. You, your loyal customers. Uh, Kerman, you remember when they changed, they got a new CEO for Coca-Cola and he decided to do, he decided to make a change to the taste of Coca-Cola. People were in an uproar. They were so pissed off that this dude, I think he like, it was less sugar or some shit like that. They lost so much sales from this dude making a slight little tweak in the taste of Coca-Cola that they lost millions and millions of dollars. Eventually, they fired his ass. But Mr. Kerman is correct. The logo for Coca-Cola has stayed the same. It's the same look. Let's look. Let's take a look. This video is a little bit long, but I think it has a lot of good information for you guys. Look at it, man. It's the same guy. You guys couldn't tell me if this was, this one here was the one that they created in 1815 versus this one. It's the same look. 
It's the same look. You don't see McDonald's switching up their logo. It's the same goddamn golden arches. Matter of fact, it looks a little more streamlined now. It just looks better. So uh, leave me a comment. Leave me suggestions. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. I'd love to know. Uh, share it with your fellow entrepreneurs. I hope this video has been very informative for you guys to understand what the difference between sales, marketing, and branding is. Um, I told you about hex code, that how you can get your hex code and keep the look consistent so you don't confuse your clients. You need a call script for you to follow so you can always be consistent and professional with your clients because at the end of the day, professional with professionalism wins over swag professionalism wins over your swag if you call if i called you and you know you're you're using all the fancy terms of today you're you're using all the fancy slang and i'd be like man you, you know this dude sounds super cool yeah but I don't think they're professional enough for me to just give them my credit card number over the phone. If you got to be, swag, you know, swagalicious, go to the club and do all that. Do it at home. But while you're working on your business, be conscious, be professional on building your empire. You could do all that fancy shit when you go to the Wynn Hotel. You could do all that fancy shit when you go to the Bellagio and then you buy $10,000 bottles in the club. Save all your swagalicious style for there. But while you're business, building your business and your empire, do that to the best of your ability. Build a professional empire. People will trust you with their money if they believe that your company is professional. So peace, love, and happiness to all you guys. I hope you guys found this informative. Salute, salute, salute. And happy endeavors. Peace.